G'day everybody. Um, in some of my earlier videos, you probably remember, we may remember seeing um, some beehives that I had. Um, that was oh, probably a year or two years ago now. Um, and they were traditional beehives uh, called Langstrith hives, which um, are the traditional hives that you see where they stack them up in boxes and as the, the hive grows, you add new boxes to the top. Um, they've got a few problems and um, they're quite uh, labour intensive. They're certainly uh, designed for um, professional beekeepers really um, and they've sort of been designed to maximise yield. Um, sometimes at the, um, uh, at the detriment or to the detriment of the bees. Um, especially now that we've got these problems uh, that have come around called hive beetle and also varroa mite. Um, so what I've decided to do is experiment with um, what's called a top bar hive, which is a more uh, natural way of beekeeping. Um, if you go to a website called BioBees, uh, that's B-I-O-B-E-E-S, I think it's .com, might be .org, can't quite remember, but Google BioBees and it'll come up and they've actually got some free plans on uh, how to make top bar hives. Um, so that's what I've done, I've got the plans. Um, the good thing about these plans is that they're, um, they're actually uh, designed so that you can make um, the hives at home uh, very simply. Um, I've just uh, finished making this one. Um, well, I haven't quite finished yet. I'll, there's a few more things I need to do, but um, I've done most of the work on it anyway. Um, and all I used for this was a circular saw, um, a drill, a drill bit and uh, a builder's square and that's basically all I used on a, and a tape measure. Um, it's only taken me probably, I don't know, maybe three or four hours to build this. Um, probably another two or three hours to finish it. Um, so uh, just taking you through um, how this sort of differs from a traditional hive. Um, instead of stacking up like you do on a traditional hive, um, this hive actually moves sideways. Um, great thing about this hive is that it's actually on legs, so it's actually up at sort of waist height, uh, which is great for me because I don't have a terribly good back, and um, if I don't have to sort of lift heavy weights, um, then that's, you know, fantastic um, benefit to this type of hive. Um, so... There's uh, these little things called follower boards, and there's two of those um, to a hive, one either side of um, what are called the top bars. Now these um, aren't quite finished yet. I need to put a triangular wooden moulding glue and, um, and nail a triangular wooden moulding to the bottom of these, and that um, faces down, and then the bees... Um, build off that triangular moulding and actually build a natural honeycomb which hangs down almost in a sort of a parabola shape uh, down the bottom and um, the beautiful thing about it is when you want to harvest it you can just lift the lid off and pull one of these out um, with the comb hanging down underneath and you can just take that out and replace it with another bar um, very very simple um, there's uh, you know, very little um, special equipment needed for it. Um, the bees don't get disturbed as much. And um, also, the, because the bees are actually building their own comb, you don't get as much honey, but um, the bees are actually able to um, build the comb to the size that's best for them. In um, traditional uh, beekeeping hives, um, the Langstrith hives generally use a foundation uh, which has a, a honeycomb pattern pressed into it. It's a, like a thin sheet of wax. And the honeycomb pattern that's pressed into that is sort of dictates to the bees the size of the comb or the size of the cells. In this, um, there is no dictation to the bees. They can do what they want and they build it naturally. The other great thing about this, I mentioned earlier, hive beetle and also varroa mite. In particular, varroa mite. Um, varroa mites are like a little lice, if you like, that... Um, that breeds in the honeycomb uh, and comes out with the newly hatched um, bees 
uh, when they hatch out of the cells and they actually sting the bee and suck the blood, if you like, from the bee or the juices from the bee and it actually weakens the bees and uh, overall it actually weakens the whole hive. Now what happens in a Langstroth hive being uh, stacked up is that the bees will actually groom themselves to try and flick off these varroa mites when they do flick them off on a traditional hive, if they're at the top of the hive, they'll flick the mite off and it'll just go down to another layer in the hive. Um, and it'll probably attach itself to another bee and um, reinfect and bite that bee. And, you know, the bees just can't get rid of them, uh, can't get rid of these mites. So um, what they started to do um, was put a screened bottom board on the Langstroth hive, which allowed the bees to at least, um, or the bees near the bottom, to actually shed the varroa mite and have them fall out the bottom of the hive. And the same with the hive beetle also. I, I believe that the screen bottom boards um, allow the hive beetles to also fall out. The good thing about these um, top bar hives is because they're stacked this way, there's certainly a lot less depth in the hive and it's more about spreading sideways. So the good thing about that is, I haven't quite finished this as I mentioned, but there's actually a screen which will go across the bottom here, plastic or stainless steel mesh will be attached to the bottom. Um, and the bees, um, if they're crawling around on the, on the comb and they're cleaning themselves and flicking off the, uh, the varroa mites, or if there's hive beetle in there, um, they will actually drop to the bottom and they'll fall out the bottom of the hive onto the ground and that's kind of the end of the of the varroa mite. So um, it's the, this type of beehive allows the bees to remain a lot stronger um, and while you might not get as much honey because they're actually putting some of their energy into creating the honeycomb um, from scratch, um, the good thing is that the hive will actually be stronger. There's also quite a lot less maintenance um, needed on these sort of hives. Um, it's a lot easier as I showed you earlier um, if you want to increase the size of the hive, um, literally all you do is um, is just slide the um, the follower board along and add another couple of these bars, and um, the hive sort of grows out sideways. There's a couple more things that I need to do to finish this off. Um, I have to um, build, obviously, put the screen in the bottom, which I just showed you, uh, and I also need to build a lid, um, which I'm probably going to make out of. Um, a wooden frame around the edge and then core flute which is that plastic corrugated cardboard sort of stuff but made out of plastic and I'll probably put a couple of layers of that on the top. Um, I may put a little peaked sort of peaked roof on it just to make it look nice in the garden um, and I'll probably I'll probably paint that to stop the um, sun breaking it down um, but I, ha I haven't quite decided yet I may even make that out of um, plywood I'm not too sure yet. Um, I also need to make a whole heap more of these bars, top bars, and attach the little triangular piece, triangular strip on the bottom. Um, I've also got to drill three entrance holes here, and then on the other side, one at each end, um, I need to drill entrance holes there. And the reason for that is you start your, your main... Um, uh, your main colony here um, but if it's a fairly new colony and it hasn't spread out too far you can actually use the ends of these to form other smaller colonies or put swarms that you might catch in there um, until maybe you've got another box uh, ready to take them so they're quite versatile um, it's quite a versatile way of beekeeping and I just love the fact that this is up at sort of waist height and that I can you know, work on it without bending over. It's almost like working on its own table out in the field, which is great. And the materials that have gone into this are pretty minimal, really. Um, very minimal compared to a uh, compared to a traditional Langstroth hive. Um, there's no sort of nothing sort of really critical about the way that this is put together. Um, there's no sort of critical measurements. There's no sort of dovetail ends or anything. It's all just sort of cut and butt joints and glued and screwed. In the end, it's it's all the legs are just bolted on um, with a couple of carriage bolts, and it's all very very simple. Um, so um, that's uh, that's my uh, top bar hive. And uh, as I said, I'd encourage you to, if you're interested in beekeeping, have a look at biobees.com, uh, B-I-O-B-E-E-S.com, and uh, have a look at their free plans. And um, 
uh, get into beekeeping because the bees certainly need our help. They're, um, they're under a lot of stress at the moment and the more beekeepers out there, the better. And also great for your garden, obviously, for pollination. So um, we'll talk to you soon. Any questions, just um, post them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.